Hello. Good morning to Dr. Azani and also people that watching this. This video is for SDA 2073 Coral Reef Ecology course for our project presentation about Rig to Reef project at Baram Ed in Sarawak. But first, let me introduce you to my group members, Fitra Amina, Ibrahim, Kara, Jeffrey, Ong Yiting, and Stephanie. I believe we all know what is coral reef, but how about artificial reef? Artificial reef is a main-main structure or object that submerged in the water, which has some of the characteristics as coral reef, whereby reef to reef is the process of converting these offshore oil and gas structures into artificial reef. So basically, this is how reef to reef looks like. Next, experimental reef project began in 1992 and have shown increase in terms of local marine biomass. Artificial reef have different functions compared with fish aggregation. They can attract and aggregate fish, but by creating an ecosystem like this, where there is input of energy and nutrient into, into this ecosystem for magnification by habitat diversity, growth and reproduction, and export biomass diversity, nutrient and energy. Full removal of oil and gas plankton would give huge damage to the animal and plant that inhabited in that area. So one of the alternative ways is decommissioning. Decommissioning first started in 2001. Post-decommissioning study in 2005 conducted by National University of Singapore and Fishery Research Institute showed presence of invertebrate populations such as Polichita, Crustacea, and Mollusca. Another marine survey in 2012 found that sunken barren ad platform caused population of soft corals. A complete removal of subtitled infrastructure during decommissioning would give impact to the ecological resources currently existing and also near the JK that have been so many years. Therefore, as the reef develop and mature, they will recruit some of invertebrate species through larvae settlement and this will contribute to increases of secondary production of these species. This table shows the species abundance at Balam at Sarawak. They have two types, microbentic composition and also microbentic dominant group species. According to Degaroff and Krauss 2016, other contaminants related to structures such as decommissioning include metal, such as arsenic, cadmium, and chromium. Other affected also found in decommissioning material that can include precipitated materials such as microbial factor. Several studies assessing fish community at artificial reef has shown that the density of many important fishery species are higher on artificial reef compared with nearby natural habitat. But this observation is still in debating because lack of fishery independent study. So, artificial reef are created to stimulate the growth of fish stock for commercial and recreational fishermen purposes. They can also function as stepping stone for both fossil and mobile species. How the rigs to reef concept works is Decommissioned oil rigs, or rigs that are no longer in use, are turned into a reef platform to support coral growth. Now, this can be done in three main ways. Towing the platform to a suitable location, toppling the platform, or removing the upper portion of the platform and submerging it. This diagram shows the three main ways an oil rig can be reefed into a substrate. Once the platform is successfully established, it can then enter the substrate for coral polyps to attach. We know that coral polyps secrete the calcium carbonate, or limestone, that acts as a base for coral to grow. This coral can attract small marine fauna, which depend on it for shelter. This attracts more and larger organisms, which becomes a food web, and thus a self-sustaining ecosystem. When a decommissioned oil rig platform is approved for rigs to reefs, several factors are taken into account. Structural integrity, location, size and complexity, etc. This to ensure that a healthy coral reef grows on this artificial platform. These platforms are monitored by the oil company that owns the rig, and any other affiliated reef monitoring organizations. Coral growth can be artificially facilitated to supplement the natural growth of coral to sustain this healthy ecosystem. The advantages of this rigs to reef project is, first, it acts as a habitat for various fishes because of its large structures, which size about hundreds of feet, uh, can offer a very unique habitat for fishes. Not only that, the rigs shape also creates a three-dimensional reef for animals to colonize and live near. Approximately, eight lake structure rigs can be a home for 12,000 to 14,000 of fishes, while the four lake structure uh, is about two to three acres of habitat for hundreds of marine species. For social output, the regional catch per unit effort of the Pacific giant octopus, uh, which is octopus Dauphini, increased in Polovina and Sakai, which proved that this area of rigs to reef project uh, encouraged the other species to inhabit. Not only that, approximately 20% juvenile also uh, increased in Southern California rig. Uh, next is the area surrounding associated underwater oil and the gas pipelines near the rigs also can act as, as nurseries such as for Bocasio rockfish. For social outcomes, 
the contaminant levels remain unchanged within the area unless the big storage is being disturbed. Thus, to maintain the quality, the water quality of this area, it is needed for proper and strict management so that the risks, the risks will remain safe for other aquatic organisms. Next is the population increase of red snapper in offshore sedimentary areas of Alabama also increased, uh, which show that uh, it is a good it is a good impact for the fishermen and also snorkelers. Last is the leak reefs act as a physical barriers to discourage illegal crawling in seagrass beds, which is in Western Europe. Thus, these leak reefs can be uh, a way to maintain a way to produce a marine sanctuary for many aquatic creatures. Although the rig to reef activity seems to have many advantages, but actually some disadvantages still there. For the social output, water quality and sediment quality were affected by the rig to reef activity. The leaking of harmful substances like hydrocarbon affect water and sediment quality. Physical disturbance of natural communities also occur. Many businesses logically use artificial reefs as a reason to just dump the rigs construction and other treasures in the ocean. It also affects the growth rate of symbiotic organisms, Zuzendere. Some studies show that copper and zinc elicit a synergistic effect in the specific growth rate of Zuzendere. For the social outcome, fish quality and health were affected. Examinations have shown that fish caught from the vicinity of platform do have higher tissue hydrocarbon burdens. Contaminant release and movement into the food change, including the contaminants such as the hydrocarbons. More coral reef means that you have more fisheries. Local fishermen will have more fishing area after the conversion of oil rig into coral reef. Some harmful techniques being used by the fishermen definitely will be a threat to the environment and ecosystem. The harmful techniques including cyanide fishing, bone fishing, and ghost fishing. Here, I will compare the rigs to reef method with other reef restoration methods. The first method up for comparison is the electrical enhancement method. Its advantages are it helps increase the environmental stress tolerance of the corals. The bio rock materials are also known to be self repairable. Its disadvantages are any excess electrical charge may cause a weaker mineral accretion. It may also cause a shift in the ecological balance. Next up is the larval enhancement method. The advantages here are the corals will have a greater chance of improving their resistance and adaptability traits. Restoration efforts could also be done in large scales. The disadvantages, however, the procedure of harvesting the gametes is a laborious activity. Also, a hefty investment is required to fund aquaria facilities. Besides that, we have the coral gardening method. Advantages-wise, coral gardening allows for reef engineering to occur. Replanting these coral colonies grown within the nurseries helps save declining number of reefs. The disadvantages of this method are there will be little to no genetic diversity once it's released to the wild. Also, ill practices on engineering the genetic traits of the corals may also occur. The last method up for comparison is direct transplantation. The, its advantages are the results of this method is noticeable immediately once the procedure takes place. The, the transplanted corals will also quickly invite the surrounding aquatic organisms to thrive in it. The disadvantages, however, is that this will definitely harm and place severe stress onto the donor coral site. Furthermore, there is a really high risk in performing this procedure. Now, let's look at an analysis of countries that establishes or advocates for the risk to reef programs. For countries that have properly established the Rigs to Reef program, there are a few. Firstly, the United States, specifically in the Gulf of Mexico. There are five states that actively implement this program, which includes Louisiana, starting as early as 1987, Texas, starting as early as 1990, Alabama, starting as early as 1953, Mississippi, and as well as Florida. The second country to have properly established this program is Brunei having launched an artificial reef program near Buracas and getting support from companies such as Brunei Shell Petroleum. And finally, in Malaysia, where the Barak 8 structure has become Malaysia's first artificial reef. And the facilities at Dana and D30 fields of Sarawak has also been decommissioned for usage of future reefs. There are a few locations that show potential and active advocation for the implementation of this program. For example, in California. Despite active establishments in the Gulf of Mexico, there are still no rigs to reef programs that are established in the state so far. This is because there are a lot of protocols involved in requesting the allowance of this program. Next, we have the North Sea region where there has been active debates about artificial reef programs and the potential role of decommissioned oil rigs. However, there has been a few strong narratives that are perceived by the public that has prevented the establishment of this program. For example, expecting no positive results due to climate differences, preference of abandoned structures to be fully removed to create space for new activities and for safety reasons, concerns regarding waste and polluted materials, 
general disapproval of green NGOs, dependency on liable parties to oversee the program, as well as the implementation of the OSPAR 98.3 protocol.